Let's all be excited. Amen. We woke up today. We woke up another day, man. And God is so good. Glory. So if you guys would please just stand with me as we go before the Lord. We're going to go into, into worship. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we lift our hearts. God, we just worship you. God, because you are so good. Lord, bless us. We thank you for being with your Holy Spirit. Fall upon us. Holy Spirit, we invite you this morning to be a part of the service. We ask that your spirit will move God in you. Lord, we thank you for your father. We pray that we would be able to doubt, Father God, so that you can fill us up. Thank you for that. It's not about us, it's not about anything that's going on here at work or at home, Father God, but it's about Jesus. This morning, God, we are here to worship you, Father. Hallelujah. So we thank you, Father. For sending your son to you. Yes. Because you've given us hope. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Yes.
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Love you, Lord. We give you all the praise. Bless all the poor of
God says you'll be a fruit. Because you can never be so old. And maybe the Lord is speaking to multiple people this morning. But if you can ever be so bold and step out and say, God, I'm surrendering at this point. I'm not doing it on my own. I can't do this, but I'm surrendering this one. Can you come up? Can you come up? We're going to be singing this song. And I believe the Lord is speaking to somebody's heart. I believe the Lord is doing something this morning. Please, please, let's not rush through what God is trying to do.
So this is what I want to encourage you. Those who came to the altar and those who are watching online or those who are sitting in the seat, and if you have made that declaration to the Lord God this morning, I am surrendering to you. I want to encourage you with this. The enemy knows who you are. He knows what, 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 what gets you. But we don't need to fear the enemy. I don't walk around thinking about who the enemy is going to give me, who is going to give up. No. Because he's been defeated. Yeah. And I have victory. Yeah. And I stand here. So this morning, as you made that declaration, God, I'm surrendering. Yes. God, I'm moving forward. We're not walking in fear. We're walking in but the enemy tries to remind you of your past. I, love, yeah. I don't know who said it, but remind him of your future. The yeah. enemy's future. Yeah. You've lost your defeated foe. Yeah. And so this morning, we have surrendered. The Lord has given us victory. Amen. And the only thing left for us things to do is just to say, praise the Lord. Come on. Praise yeah. the Lord.
God, we agree with your word. And this morning, as we have given unto you, Lord, we know what your word has said, and we're standing upon your promises. For you are not a man, and you shall lie. Hallelujah. And so, Father God, I pray that as you see fit, that you will pour out your blessings upon your children. If it's with peace, then let the peace of God reign in their heart. If it's with joy, then bring joy. Glory. But if it's financial gain, Father, I pray that checks will be in the mail, Father. However you see fit, let it be so to the glory of God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, so at this time, what we're going to do is we're going to dismiss our kids to Sunday school. Kids, if you guys can, uh, uh, teenagers, we go away. Kids go first, and the teenagers follow after your, your leader. Have a fear, fear this leader. Hallelujah, hallelujah. will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. 
You must each make up your own minds as to how much you should give. Don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves the person who gives cheerfully. And God will generously provide all you need, then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As the scripture says, godly people give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will never be forgotten. For God is the one who gives seed to the farmer and bread to eat. In the same way, he will give you many opportunities to do good. And he will produce the great harvest of generosity in you. Yes, you will be enriched so that you can give even more generously. When you take your gifts to those who need them, they will break out in thanksgiving to God. So two things will happen. The needs of the Christians in Jerusalem will be met. And they will be joyfully expressing their thanksgiving to God. Amen. Amen. How many believe the Bible is the word of God? Amen. Amen. That's why I open up by saying I want to speak to Christians. Because giving is such a critical issue. And it has been perverted so much by wicked men and women that stand behind these pulpits. And they abuse the element of giving, which is a biblical thing to do. Can you say amen? amen. It's biblical. It's not man-made. It's biblical. And if it's up to you to decide, are you going to believe what it says? Or cheerful means to be full of cheer and good spirit. Expression of a good spirit. Wholeheartedly, ungrudgingly, a cheerful giver. Paul writes to Philip in chapter 1, verse 4. He says, I'm reading that later times. He says, I always thank God when I pray for you, Philip, because I keep hearing of your trust in the Lord Jesus and your love for all of God's people. You are generous because of your faith. And I am praying that you will be ready to put your generosity to work. For in so doing, we will come to understand all the good things we can do for Christ. First thing I want to talk about is making up your own mind. We took up an offering this morning, whether you believe in giving or not, that's between you and God. Pastor said, if you've already made out your tithe, you can stand. If you haven't, I'd ask for an envelope or give you one. Uh, whether you filled it out at home or you gave here, how many know no one told you what to give? How many know it's nobody's business what you give? You give whatever you want to give. And so it's critical that we understand that I want to give, I want to give, according to the word of the Lord. Because the Bible says you must each make up your own mind. But if I'm going to make up my mind on something, I'm going to know I need information. Yeah. I need information. And what a better place to get my information than from the word of God. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 20, God uses Elijah to bring the entire nation back to God. And so the Bible says in 1 Kings 18, 20, and Ahab summoned all the people of the prophets to Mount Carmel. Then Elijah stood in front of them and said, How long are you going to waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow him. But all the people remained silent. Look, if you're going to serve God, serve him. If you're not, don't. Make up your mind. If you're going to come to church and you're going to be a Christian and you want everything that God has for your life, make up your mind. Make up your mind to come and learn how to pray. Make up your mind to be a worshiper. Make up your mind to share your faith. Make up your mind to be a giver. Amen. Or don't give. It's fine. Just don't expect what this book has for you to come to you because you're living against the word of God. You cannot be that ignorant to think that God's going to rewrite his word for you. And for every good sermon you're going to hear on giving, you're going to hear a hundred on why not to give. Your biggest mistake is to go on the internet and look at tithing and you see what you get. Because the Bible says in Proverbs 11, 1, a false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but in just way this is your life. And people have become unbalanced in the kingdom of God Multiple reasons. Yes, I'm not going to defend people that have God has blessed their ministries and they live in $12 million mansions and fly jets. I'm not defending that. That's demonic. I don't care what anybody says. But the truth of it is, God wants to bless you. And because of that, people use it. Well, that's why I don't give because look at what they do with the money. Why do you care what they do with the money? 
Because when you stand before God, you're not going to stand with Him. You're going to stand by yourself. So what are you doing with your money? Huh? I'll say it again. People that don't want to give love those kind of messages because it gives them another excuse not to give. Go ahead, don't give. Let me tell you something, my friend. I'm 65. I got saved at 23. I had black hair. I weighed 185 pounds. My hair was wavy. Now it's wavy goodbye. <laughs>
that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, yeah. and thou shalt have good success. Yeah. Amen. Only a fool who has kids would say, do you want your kids to be prosperous? No, I want them broke and stupid. No. <laughs> or do you want them to be prosperous and have good success? Yes, yeah. amen. Well, that's what God wants for you. And the word prosperity has become a cuss word in the house of God. It sounds like it's demonic. Don't talk about that. You're going to scare my people. Well, they're going to scare me. God will bring the people that really want to serve the Lord. <laughs> Nehemiah 1.11. Oh, Lord, he prays. When he goes to rebuild what God has called him to do. Oh, Lord, I beseech you, I beg you. Let now thy ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant and to the prayers of thy servants who desire to fear thy name and to prosper thy servant this day and grant him mercy. Mm -hmm. And to prosper me. Yeah. You can believe whatever you want to. That's up to you. Mm -hmm. I choose to believe God loves me. Amen. I choose to believe that if God didn't hold back his only begotten son, why would he hold back anything else for me? Mm -hmm. I choose he will, I believe to he wants to be blessed and my children blessed can't be saved. Amen. You can't go to the top and all with scripture. I gave you Joshua, I gave you Nehemiah. Job 36, 11. If they listen and obey God, they will be blessed with prosperity throughout their lives. All their years will be pleasant. Come on. Yes, amen. All their life will be blessed. Mm -hmm. All your life will be blessed. I'm telling you that I came from the Bible and, and, and you know, I was around. Every day I'm rooted, man. I got a Lincoln outside. And my son blessed me. Oh, man. That's not too blessed. Too blessed to be stressed. Huh? I got a Lincoln outside. got my name on it. Thank you, Jesus. And when I cruise to the neighborhood and I see homeboys my age, begging with signs, you know, we'll work for food. Larry, you don't want to work. You're a bum. If you wanted to work, you find a job. But all they want is you to work and give them what you earn. Yeah. China, I don't think that means, brother. <laughs> and I look and I trip home while you know with this paintbrush mustache, Papa Loco. <laughs> Come on, I'm preaching this morning. Yes, sir. <laughs> and I say, I don't know what that fool did. And I don't know, he must have burned every bridge under the sun and nobody cares enough to help him. Your life sucks. Sucks to be you, brother. Because I want to rock past you in my leg with the AC on, worshiping God. I'm going to get me a prime rib. Come on, somebody. <laughs> or a fat ribeye. <laughs> and a baked potato, not a regular one, but a pregnant one. <laughs> Butter. I'm going to get my rub on. And I don't have to look at the price on the menu. Uh -oh. <laughs> because I'm blessed. Because he's been good to me. Yeah. Because of his grace and his mercy and my obedience all combined yes. together. Yes. I choose to believe that God is not a liar. Right. My son, he's 19 years old now. My youngest, my oldest is 47. Call me Father Abraham. I keep making babies. <laughs> <laughs> he was a kid. Even a child can understand. Do you want a lot? Yeah, Dad. Then give a lot. Oh, you want a little? Give a little. Yeah. Because what? You reap what you sow. Do you think that's a liar? Mm. I read the prayer. Yeah. And then it said, have expectation. Mm -hmm. You ask the normal church, how many of you believe that God will bless you and God will give you when you give? Oh, no, that's wrong. That's a wrong mentality, brother. I don't know what Bible you're reading. Mm. My Bible says, whatever measure you use, God will use it to give it back to you. Right. Press down, shake it together, run it over. Right. And people, I don't know what they're thinking, but they don't look it. Mm -hmm. Remember this, the farmer who plants a few seeds will get a small crop. Right. So here it is. If you're here this morning, and your money's funny and your change is strange, <laughs> and you ain't happy with the money in your pocket or your bank, guess whose fault it is? Uh -oh. Don't blame him. Don't blame him. You're afraid to give. No. You're afraid to give. Mm -hmm. And even if you're mad at me already because I'm talking about money, I don't care. <laughs> because I've come to teach.
teach you how to be blessed. Yes, amen. And the way to be blessed is to give. Right. And we are so jacked up in our mentality, you go into a Bible bookstore and there's any left. You'll find a whole wall on prosperity when all you need is one. All you need is one. Come on, man. Be realistic. Ain't nobody here really playing the stocks. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you tell the Pepsi and Rasa, you got CDs. Yeah, I've got the, you know, I've got the worship. I've got the CDs in the bank, but we're not taking them. Because <laughs> we're so far from real money, we don't know what real money is. But God wants to give you real money. I said, God wants to give you fat money. Come on. God wants to bless you. Big wants to supersize your blessing. Amen. You know, when you go to Ricky D's and they say, Do you want to go to Lodge for 35 cents? You go, Yes. How much do you want to jump over? Come on. <laughs> you ain't never walked into 7 Eleven and bought a small big gulp. Oh, come on. Now. <laughs>
replenish the earth, subdue, and have dominion. Yeah. Five things. The hand of God. Yeah. He didn't say, I'm going to give you this, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to empower you right. how to be blessed. Amen. I'm going to touch you, I'm going to put my hand on you, and when I touch you, you're going to become fruitful. Mm -hmm. You're going to multiply. Mm -hmm. You're going to replenish. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yes. Yeah. We have these things, these attributes in our life, and we don't even know it. Yeah. And you just think you're lucky. Or you're fortunate when you never even knew you're walking in the, in the anointing and the blessing of God's hand on your life. Amen. Be fruitful, man. Come on. Mm -hmm. I want you to be fruitful. Yes. To abound. That's fruitful means abounding. Come on. Yes. Yes. Amen. More than enough, can you say? Amen. I said more than enough. Yes. Amen. But that's why people yes. don't have enough because their minds are too small. Mm -hmm. You ask a big God for a little thing. You're still a captain and you call him your sheep, which means little God. He ain't no little God. He's a big God. Yes, yes. He is. He's yes. a big God. Yes. You're asking him. You're insulting his intelligence by asking for something small. You got a woman with five kids living in the body and things are getting bad. Lord, get me out of here. Anything. Just get me out of here. Because there are smaller things. So small, cucarachas have fun beds. Oh. <laughs> and she gets mad. She gets mad. Oh, why, why didn't you get your bigger place? Because you didn't ask me for one. Uh -huh. <laughs> you said anything, I gave you anything. <laughs> Lord, give me a car, any car. What are you? Here comes car with no transmission. <laughs> <laughs> now you're born in rubble. <laughs> Stop it and sign it with your feet. <laughs> Are you afraid to ask? Nobody told you who you prayed to. You prayed to a God who's able to yeah. do above and beyond what you can even think or ask. Right. Exactly. And when you ask big, you think you're asking big. God says, you think that big? Let me show you what big is. Uh, Amen. Come on. Let me show you what big is. Come on. Yes, yes, right. Come on, man. Amen. It's time to enlarge your mind, can you say? Yeah. You exactly. need big. Increase. Mm -hmm. Don't increase you. Can you say that? Amen. Mm -hmm. so more than enough. Replenish. You never run out. Mm -hmm. I said, you need to go get some soda and water. Right? I come back with five cases of soda and five cases of water. Why did you buy so much? So I don't have to go back so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that's. Don't you think that's overdoing it? No. See, you see overdoing it, I see abundance. Uh. <laughs> huh? Yeah, but 30 rolls of toilet paper? <laughs> Did you have an issue as a child? <laughs> Were you traumatized? No. But I'll tell you what, I don't get traumatized as an adult. You <laughs> 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 need to name no paper. <laughs> Nick Foles, who's a professional quarterback, says he's a millionaire. Mm. 
I don't believe in the prosperity gospel. Well, they give all your money away, homeboy. Give it to me. It's not with me. I'll take it. People are so foolish. I don't know. Shut up. You see tell me you don't need money? No. If you're mad at me, I don't know. What's that? You don't like money? I'll be at the door waiting for you with my hand. Give me your wallet. I'm going to take all the money out of your wallet. Are you going to eat church happy today? Because <laughs> I'm lying down here to make you happy. Give me some Jesus juice. And then you want it. You're a fool. Come on. Who wants to be broke? Do you really want to go home today? And turn the light on and cut off because you didn't have the way to pay the bill? You want to go home today over the fridge and nothing in there but our boss is rolling hand and onion rolling around in there? Oh, no. You got money for this? <laughs> Sometimes I get up in the middle of the night for water, and I don't know why, because I'm not going to eat or cook, but I hope the freezer doesn't cook. Come on, Pastor, and a piece of carne asada falls on my toe. Ow! <laughs> but then the Holy Ghost steps in and says, You know, son, pain comes in the night, but joy comes in the morning. Oh. <laughs> I put that meat back in the freezer, put it in the sink. Turns around, comes back, and says, uh, 
give me the 20 I gave you. She says, what? Give me the 20 I gave you. Why? Well, just trust me. You are the nastiest man I've ever met in my life. Um, no one's ever been that ugly to me and that dirty to me than to give me money for gas, then come back and want to take it back. Relax, man. I need to take it back. My wife and kids wanted to give something to you. I just want to take a glass, take it back, bless it, and give it back to you. Mm -hmm. Give you more. Uh -huh. That's how people, when they first get saved, they think, I'm not going to give. They're taking my money. They're not taking your money. God's asking you to give it willingly, yes. cheerfully, yeah. so he can what? Bless you. Yeah, right. yeah. I'm going to take a long time, and I don't know about you, but I would rather have 90% bless than 100% curse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Huh? It's, it's amazing when you break it down. Mm -hmm. Off a dollar, you're getting a dime. Right. Are you that tight home? You can get a dime? <laughs> Titus 1 2. The truth gave, he gave the confidence of eternal life, which God promised. But then before the world began, that he cannot lie. God cannot lie, didn't he didn't say that. I mean, this is so crazy. I have to preach 12 weeks on YouTube. I'm really good. Number one, I believe it works, didn't you say? Yes, amen. I believe it works. Amen. I got closet full of clothes, man. I got closet full of suits, shirts. I got Stacy on. Hey, watch out. Hey, now. Hey. For the men that like Stacy. I have 30 pairs of stays in the path. Uh-oh. <laughs> and I ain't bought one pair. I got six kids. Um. And they say, Dad, what do you want? I don't know. What do you want to do? I'll buy you some shoes. I'll find My son bought me five pairs this past Christmas. Um. Come on. My kids, I've been going to the fitness for over 20 years. I went in there one time, gave my clothes in, and I saw this shoe. So that's what people are picking up and trying on. Pretty good. How much it goes for you? Two dollars. <laughs> You're looking at a two dollar suit. Come on. Hey, <laughs> man. <laughs> <Gotcha. laughs> <Amen. laughs> and she ain't done because she charges me more than two dollars to clean it, so she got over, not me. <laughs> <laughs> She's winning at that game. <laughs> but it's crazy when it comes to giving. Come on. Yeah. And then the reality is, you know what? You don't need nobody to tell you to give. Right. All you need is the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. And don't ever blame the devil. That's not a Wednesday. You take up an offering, you know? You look at your watch, you got a 20 and four dollars, and the devil says, you know, and the Lord says, give the 20. You're like, I'm rebuking the devil. In Jesus' name. <laughs> the devil ain't asking you to give. He don't want you less. He wants you to keep that 20. Yeah. You know who gets here most? People who step out of faith. Yeah. You got a Wednesday man, you got $24, and the Lord says, give that 20. Mm -hmm. All right. You sure? <laughs> it's barely Wednesday. I said, well, Thursday, Friday, it's a great day. You know, I like that roast roach. <laughs> All right. He gives it 20. Then he goes to work the next day, and the roast coach comes. He knows his water, he gets his chip, gets his soda, gets his water, and realizes that's when he's gone. Oh, man. Listen carefully. Oh, man. I can't believe I was that stupid last night to give God $20. Uh, I'll never do that again as long as I live. Now I gotta either ask for credit or borrow money. How stupid could I have been? And the guy comes up and says, hey, bro, I don't know if you remember, but two weeks ago, you lent me 20 bucks, and I forgot all about it, and he gives him the money. Mm -hmm. And he pays, and he walks away from the Lord's coach, and he says, thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. And the Lord speaks and says, no. <laughs> uh -huh. You don't think I heard you last night? Uh -huh. hmm? Look at me when I talk to you. <laughs> and listen. I gave you back your 20 from last night. So you have nothing coming. Don't ask me for anything. I heard what you said about me. And I know how you feel about me now. So here's your seed back. You eat it. You eat your seed. 
but don't you expect anything from me. I don't know where we live in. You know, we got to subscribe. Oh, God's a loving God. Come on. Yeah. He's a big sissy. He ain't no sissy, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. He don't play. Can you see that? Amen. He don't play. People don't want to believe. I don't care. Honest to God, I don't care. Because you ain't nobody different. You got a Bible just like I do. Right. Read your Bible. Mm -hmm. Do it or don't do it. It don't matter what you say. Amen. You cannot give the Lord. Amen. Look at my watch. I'm going to watch this. I'm not going to stop you away, but God is good. <laughs> I went to Wichita, Kansas, in their five day revival. I've done that. They lost my luggage. I was scheduled for this Friday morning at a conference. And I called the pastor, I'm going back home, 10 o'clock on a Thursday night. The pastor, they lost my luggage. They lost my message. It's in my briefcase. And they lost my belt. And he says, well, it's too late to get anybody else. You're going to have to preach. I go, Pastor, you're not listening. I didn't preach, but they lost my belt. <laughs> my pants are going to fall off. He says, well, wear clean underwear. <laughs> And they'll get a sermon on the show. <laughs> I had a message on giving, because I've been to conferences for 42 years. Because I always talk about prayer, evangelism, winning world missionaries, and all that good stuff. And I'm not against that. But no one ever wants to talk about giving. Yeah. But you're not going to find churches on EBT. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> huh? You're not. You're not going to get on an airplane to Russia with government cheese. Come on, somebody. <laughs> it's money. It's money. So, you know, I get done preaching, and, and, and I couldn't ask the pastor to take an offer, so I didn't. But then when I get done preaching, someone says, hey, why don't you take up an offer? And I go, because it ain't my conference. The pastor, what do you want to do? You sit right there. And he said, uh, I said, what do you want to do? He says, go ahead. And give me some ushers. We probably had 40, 50 people who took up an offer. Now, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me show you the true story. I went in the morning service in my Corvette. <laughs> See, you ain't shouting. Uh, <laughs> I went to the morning service in my corner. It's not about things. You better hear me. It ain't about things. It's about God. Yes. Then I went back and died in my Cadillac. Oh, there you go. That's right. <laughs> I'm reaching the truth. Uh -huh. I was doing a revival in Oxford. And my son says, and, and I was driving and I saw a car right down the street. I said, man, that's a bad ride. And I had just washed my Cadillac. I had nothing to cry about. I had it quiet. My tires were all wrong, my gas was all wrong, I even all wrong, my forehead, I had everything on my head. <laughs> <laughs> my way to go preach, I see a Corvette, and I go, that's a beautiful ride. All I said to myself was, I can see myself getting out of church in a Corvette. <laughs> Why not? Yes. Why not? So I pick up my friend, he goes, man, the car smells good. And I go, man, I think I'm going to get a Corvette. What? You're going to get a comfort for a car like that? I go, I didn't say I wasn't thinking about it. <laughs> Then I get home three days later, my sister says, hey, Pop, come outside, I got you something. I go, no, I ain't going outside, I'm tired. Bring it in here, because I can't bring it in, Dad. You've got to come outside. Come outside, I said, I'm going to my driveway. Wow. It's a true story, it's just me. <laughs> true story. And I'm glad he bought it for me, because it was too small for me. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't fit. <laughs> but God, if I get an accident, I'm going to have to jog like a big guy. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I got in, but I had not eaten yet, so I was okay. <laughs> so I didn't get out. I said, oh, no. You can't get out. <laughs> All right. All right. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had my mom who was living for five years, and she was in a wheelchair. You can't put no wheelchair and mark it on the Corvette. Oh, no. I said, you take it. I don't want it. It's don't work for me. Praise God. You know, I'm not no guy in a midlife crisis. Come on. With a gold chain on my glue here on my chest and riding down the boulevard. <laughs> Grow up already, man. I got back. And the pastor said, man, you know, God used you. He was trying to make it right. Because, man, the Lord really used this one. But I mean, he used the Lord. I thought, man, he was going to give over $10,000 this morning. Mm -hmm. I said, well, praise the Lord. When I get that preaching, the Lord says, that was a good message. I said, well, thank you. He said, now give $500. I said, what? <laughs> he said, give $500. And I said, hmm. Lord, you don't understand. I just got back. I haven't even been to my desk. I don't even have bills I have to pay. I don't even have how much money I have. Did I ask you all that? Well, no, I'm just saying. I'm probably just saying. I'm just saying. I told you what to do. Do it or don't do it. It don't matter to me. And I said, you know what? You're right. I don't know what I told you. But I'm going to give you $500. 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 I'm going to give
wasn't happy to get $500. I said, whatever, man. You always win. So I gave $500, and I get home, and this was Friday. It was week before Thanksgiving, and I said, Lord, well, my son says, hey, Dad, I just got home. He was in the Marine Corps for 11 years. He said, Pop, um, I got a check right now. I want to put some money in your ministry. Give me your, uh, who are you back with? I said, Chase. Because when I don't pay my bills, they chase me. <laughs> he said, well, give me your numbers. I want to bless you. I said, I picked up my son from school. My son calls. I put it on speaker. He says, hey, Pop, check your bag. And I go, no. And he said, check it. Call me back. And I said, what? Please. Let him give me $20. At least. At least, God. Because i got to give them the money for the turkey and the ham and the pies and the gravy and the biscuits. Come on, God. All the biscuits. And I, I need the money, Lord. And so I checked my bag. And I said, you're good. And I think I had like $300 in it. He said, your balance is $2,800. I said, what? Play it again, God. <laughs> One more time. Your balance is two thousand. I said, my son gave you twenty five hundred dollars. Wow. Crazy. And people can say, well, that don't count because that's just said it counts to me it's in my wallet. Don't tell me it don't count, man. It's in my wallet. Oh, no. that's right. I'm preaching today, man. I'm preaching. I'm telling you the truth, baby. Amen. Yeah. So, in that conference, I just said, look, man, we're going to sacrifice. God wants you to sacrifice today. What's a sacrifice? Anything that costs you something. So if you have ten thousand in the bank, what's a hundred dollars? You don't sacrifice it. Nothing. But if you got hundred and thirty dollars in your wallet, you give hundred. You're making a sacrifice. Yeah. And it's not how much you give; it's how much you sacrifice. Yeah. That's what God is going to see. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I will reach another church two months later or so. A month later, the sister comes up to me and says, "Pastor, I need to talk to this church." I was at the conference, you took the offer, and you said if you give them 10, get 20. If you give them 20, get 50. Give them 50, get 100. If you give them 100, get 5. Me and my husband looked at each other when we said 5. And we knew we had to get 500. We had it for bills, but not to spare. But something told us we've got to trust God. Can you say amen? amen? And so we stepped out of faith and gave $500. And she said, you see that little boy right there? I go, yeah. Well, that's my husband's nephew. The husband is doing life in prison. He ain't ever going to get out. The mom is gone. We've had it for two years. They called me last week and said, come get the sign the paperwork. The boy's all yours. Come sign. I went. They said, okay, you're going to get $780 for him a month and a check for like $1,100. And she said, I don't know what she really meant, so I didn't say nothing. I just walked away. Then I got home. And I got 24 checks for $1,100. I'm talking rasa. Come on. I'm talking rich folk. I'm talking people. Come on. Being the rights of Jesus Christ. She said, I went to the bank, Pastor. And I ain't no preacher. But when I gave that woman those checks, she said, what is all this? I don't know. Some guy came and preached and challenged the church and me and my husband, we took a step of faith, we gave 500, this is what God gave us back. Yeah. I'm here to tell you, man, this is no gimmick, can you yes. say? Amen. It's not a gimmick, Amen. this is the word of God. Yeah. And it's up to you if you want to give it, if you don't want to give, keep your money. No, no. Mm -hmm. I'm telling the truth. Yep. Yeah, it's true. But I want to tell you, you're only going to hurt yourself and your family. Right. And I'll say it last but not least, you ain't going to stay young forever. <laughs> and when you get old, man, if you ain't got nothing in the bank, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. You're going to be in some serious trouble because they're not going to land up outside your door with bags of money to help you. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a tough time. you got nobody to blame but yourself. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Yeah. Wow. You ever try to get some money and you find out you're an overdraft? <laughs> Come on, I'll just buy it. That would be. You know what's sad? Christians, are, some Christians are an overdraft today because mm -hmm. they don't know how to get you know what debt stands for? The word debt, D E B T. Doing everything to time. You in debt? Guess what? Oh, boy. I'm taking my time today because I'm having a good time. Yes, it's because God wants to bless you. Today. Amen. And last but not least, we can do more for God. I said, we can do more for him. Because winning, winning souls is not a choice, it's a commitment. Mm -hmm. We drove by the freeway and we saw the homeless encampment. Mm -hmm. And he said, what's that? I don't know. We looked and see all the tents in there. 
Look how far it stands. Look how far it stands. Who's going to help these people if we don't? But how can we feed the hungry when we ain't got very good enough for ourselves? No, we've got to ask God to bless us, can you say that? Amen. So we can bless other people. It's not yeah. about me, man. Yeah. It's about blessing other people. Amen. About blessing Amen. other people. Amen. And if you give, God will bless you. Yes, will. My brother's right here. He's a handyman. To me, the best in the world. Come on now. <laughs> I ain't never been nobody this gift as him. He's as humble as they come, man. And he, you know, he, he just put his head down. But I'm going to tell you, he's the best. He's the best. And one day he was doing a job and he took time out to call his wife because she was okay in the kids. And she says, oh, oh, by the way, I just want you to know, I just gave a $1,000 offer. And he said, okay. Then he goes back to work and the person comes and says, oh, hey, I just wanted to give you this because you've been really doing a good job. It's a check for a thousand dollars. He's right there. I ain't making it up. I'm not making it up. Can you say that? He's right there. You know what I mean? I was in the parking lot. <laughs> but it's real. Can you say that? Amen. It's real. Yes, it is. And the reason why people don't experience miracles is because you never want to stretch yourself. Mm -hmm. The people that give that 20 on a Wednesday and keep the three. Or the people that will go to the bank and say, man, I don't know if I had $18 or $28, I don't remember. Man, I hope I got enough to get another $20 out because I gave my $20. <laughs> well, you go to the ATM, get your card out, start punching your numbers in, realize you're standing on something. Look down, and it's money. But you're ghetto, so you know how to play the game. <laughs> I'm almost done. You pretend you're putting in numbers, come on. You pretend you're tired, so you know you're wearing chocolates. <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> you take off, like you stole something. You pull into a set of letter where it's a little dark, come on. You start counting. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20. Thank you, Jesus. Then you go to church on Sunday until you really not going to believe what happened. Wednesday, man, I don't know why, but I just heard the Lord told me to get 20. All I had was 23. I gave the 20. And God gave me back 120. I went, oh, come on, man. Oh, that sucks. That never happens for me. And it never will because you're too tight. Come on, man. You're too tight. You squeak. You be when you walk. Come on, man. No, we're here because we love God today. Amen. We give because we love God. Amen. 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 We're here to win souls yes. so that other people can know the God that we know. Yes. And can be blessed the way. Let's be honest, man. Everyone in this house today is blessed. Yes. Amen. We are blessed beyond yes. 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 Number one, if you can see me, you ain't blind, you're blessed. Yes. Amen. If you can hear me, you ain't deaf, you're blessed. Yes. Amen. I don't see wheelchairs, I don't see walkers. I know my brother comes in a wheelchair, but God is good. Yes, he is. We are blessed beyond measure. Amen. And yet God says, you haven't seen anything yet. Mm -hmm. The best is yet to come. Mm -hmm. Just be faithful. We need to give God a praise. Come on. Come on, give him a better praise than that. Come on. I want to pray for you now. Father, we thank you. We pray everyone here knows you, God, and loves you. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, we're going to go ahead and change the order of the service. We're going to go ahead and pray for you. Listen, this morning, we're going to go ahead and stand in reverence to the Lord. Stand if you can. If you can't, we understand that as well. But if you can possibly stand, stand with us. When you're ready, come. Come meet with God in the song. He's going to help you. He's going to heal some things in you. He's going to bless you. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to empower you to be blessed. Come when you're ready. Get out of your seat. Come. Come, 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 come. Come. Come and worship. Come and worship. Come and worship. Come. 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 Hallelujah. We've got all day. That all day. When you get here, just begin to worship. Just begin to worship. You know how. You don't need me. Just begin to worship.